everyone. March is here and welcome to the channel once more. And today we have Gabe Norwood, Norwood for President. <laughs> Thank you so for really joining lovely. us, man. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, man. No problem. Thanks for having me. Okay. How's the family? They're good. They're good. Everybody's healthy. Just trying to stay sane and, you know, in need of a haircut. But that's about it. Be okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe I'll throw you some tips. I, I personally shave mine on the si just on the side. <laughs> just on the side? Yeah. yeah it's ugly under here. There's a lot <laughs> going on. First up, the first question that I want to throw you is, when was the first time you fell in love with basketball? I was probably five years old. Uh, five years old. Uh, my dad, I've always grew up around sports. My dad played college football in the States. Uh, okay. was, got into coaching when I was five years old. And got his first coaching job at the University of Arizona. And uh, my family moved there. And I started playing, you know, like in the States, you have like YMCA, like youth league. And mm -hmm. kind of got so naturally uh, attracted to the game. Uh, mm -hmm. Felt like I was good at it. And uh, yeah, I've fallen in love with the game since I was probably five years old. Would you consider an early bloomer or a late bloomer when it comes to playing? I'm, I mean, I think I was definitely, you know, confident in my skills at an early age uh, i think it's something that my my dad my parents saw mm -hmm. they they got us in every sport you know growing up in the states everything's seasonal so i played football and i played basketball and i played baseball and it, it just kind of flowed season to season uh throughout my youth so you know it was just kind of a sports family and, and something that i you know just felt comfortable doing uh, ever since i was young yeah your brother's a football player right Right, right, right. I have two, two brothers that play, play football. Ah, two of them. I just thought this was one. Yeah, one didn't make it to the NFL. Mm -hmm. um, you know, had, got cut two, two years in a row with the, the Bears and the Steelers. But mm -hmm. my other brother, Jordan, uh, you know, Super Bowl champ with the Broncos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has a good yeah. story. <laughs> but uh, yeah. here in the Philippines, you're considered tall, right? But back there, were you... What, were, what position were you playing? Yeah, I think, you know, I wasn't, I was far from short, but I was, I was definitely wasn't the tallest guy in my grade or in my class or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I played the point most of my life growing up and then, you know, gradually hit a little growth spurt in high school. Um, my mm -hmm. brother, Jordan, who played with the Broncos, is shorter than me, but we were teammates in high school. He was a year younger. So he played the point and I moved over to the, to the three. I was around six, three at that time, six, two. And then, uh, yeah, grew a little bit more in college. So I, I gradually grew. I'm not like those stories that you hear, like, you know, Anthony Davis one storm, summer just comes back like seven foot or something. I, I yeah. just gradually grew all the way through into college. But you started first as a point guard, right? Like a yeah, guard. yeah. Started at, with the ball in my hand and then kind of whatever team I was on just kind of filled roles uh, from there. Would you consider like telling our, our viewers, like, as a kid, what – part of your game should they work on? What piece of Man, I think, um, for me personally, I think ball handling is huge. Mm -hmm. um, naturally, everybody works on putting the ball in the basket, you know, shooting threes, especially now, you know, the game's evolved since I started picking up the ball. Everything was about, you know, breaking your guy down and getting to the basket. Now it's more, you know, creating space and shooting a three and things like that. But mm -hmm. uh, essentially it comes down to being able to handle the ball. I think that really – makes you an asset anywhere on the court. You look at guys like, you know, Djokovic now, the Joker and everything. He's, he's the five man really dictating the offense because he can handle it, put it on the floor and create for others. So I, I think, you know, in terms of being a team player and always having a role on a team, if you can dribble the ball and facilitate, it's huge. Yeah, and you're a perfect example for that. Like in our national team, you're not the shortest one, but you're mostly running the point, right? Yeah, yeah. I try to make, you know, at the end of the day, make other guys' jobs easier. Mm -hmm. You can all win that way. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Who was your first idol? The one you look up to NBA-wise or in your school back then? I mean, probably for me, you know, outside of the, the easiest was I came up, uh, you know, prime Jordan era. Like, I got to sit there and watch all these games that, you know, kids now just watch the highlights. Of. So, you know, Jordan was the first one to really catch my eye. Mm -hmm. um, but like you said, probably local guys, guys that, you know, didn't even make it to the NBA, guys like, you know, I would go to AU tournaments living in Maryland at the time, and I'd see guys like Jared Jack, who had a really good NBA career, solid player, um, 
but I played at Georgia Tech in the States. But then guys like, you know, I'll throw a, like Derek, Derek Snowden. He played at Villanova, didn't make it to the NBA. Oh, but a guy okay. from my area who was like, I thought one was one of the coolest people I ever met. Mm -hmm. And then after that, he was just a, a dog. Like he would defend anybody. He'd go at anybody and challenge anyone. And he was like that kind of point guard I wanted to be like. Ah, uh, okay. That's nice. Yeah. Let's go to the sneakers. Which one, right. uh, the first sneaker that you really played with, like played the hell out of it? Like, Man. I love it. Man, my favorite Actually, the one that really sparked my memory, I had to be around 10 years old. And, you know, up until that point, I was already playing basketball for like five years. I had an idea of shoes and what I thought were cool. You know, like Larry Johnson had his shoe out. And yeah. like Grant Hill had his. And like those are the type of players who were popular. But my first pair of Jordans I got when I was 10 years old, and it was the Jordan 10s. Actually, when they came back out with them, I had to, Which color? I had to get them right here. You gotta keep it classic. <laughs> right here. The These are the first pair. Yeah. This is the first one I remember like wanting. Like, Dad, can I get <laughs> these please? And he surprised me right before like one of our AAU tournaments. And I wore them to the ground. Yeah. To the and, ground. But and, yeah, and that's one of the first Jordans that really played well. Yeah, Likewise, I, I right? love them. Yeah. I love those. For me. Personally, I don't know if this is a later question, but for me, those are the best Jordans to hoop in. I love playing in the tent. Oh, okay. What's current shoe right now that you really Ooh. like playing with? Man. I know you, you have lots right now, but if there's just, you, have, you need to pick up one seeker up there that you need to play with, which, which one would you get? I really like the LeBron Lowe's. I, I like the LeBron Lowe's right now. Um, had a little bit like tougher movement in the in the mids, but uh -huh. when he came out with the lows, I, I, I was lucky enough to to grab a pair. Shout out to Nike Philippines. Uh, yeah. I was able to grab a pair. And, yeah, I've been I been want. using those in practice. Yeah, right there. Um, <laughs> hopefully, you know, once the PBA starts back up, I, they can hit the court. But they feel good. They're, mm. they're super comfortable. You know, I I can move in. I'm a, I'm a guy that doesn't like to tape too much, so I, I need a little bit of you know flow to my shoe. Yeah, the 17 just came out with the low. Yeah, yeah, that's that exactly one? what I was saying. Yeah, the 17 lows. Yeah. PBA wise, which which player you really want to play against with that you are excited to Man. match up with? I mean, it's always fun to go against your boys. So you know, you got Joe Devance and mm -hmm. Chris Ross, and you know, Lord willing, Saul Mercado lands on a team again. And and those are my guys, but at the end of the day, that's bragging rights at the same at the same time. So <laughs> those are the guys that I love to play against. Um, but it's just in terms of straight, strictly talent and, and challenge, mm -hmm. uh, man, I guess it's different for me since I, I kind of play one through four. So, you know, you have guards like, you know, the young kids now, CJ and Robert mm -hmm. and Terrence and, and, and Kiefer and those guys, but then I also guard the wing, so you know, especially when the imports come out, and you got Justin Brownlee, who's probably one of the best imports ever to play in the PBA. Uh, yeah. That's a challenge every time you go up against him. It's, it's a fun challenge as a defender. The hardest one to defend. The hardest to defend. Yeah. I'll give you. I'll give you in segments. Early yeah. in my career, the hardest for me to defend was Willie Miller, because Willie was just. Attack. Like he was so gifted offensively, he could do everything. He could shoot, finish at the basket. He posted me up like I was five two or something. Like put me on the block. But currently today, man, it'd be probably it'd actually be a guy like probably like CJ or like Rashawn McCarthy on a team where where they have the super green light. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. There's guys now like Terrence, if, if you can force him, if he misses a couple, you know what I mean? They have so much ammunition where they might bring somebody off the bench and you won't have to worry about it for a while. But when it's those, those CJ, those Robert Bullocks who are always attacking 24-7, I'm 35 years old. I, I, don't, I can't chase them around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially when you're chasing them around, right? Sure, sure. Um, Lifestyle-wise, which sneaker would you choose? Can you show us? couple of pairs there and which Man. one <laughs> well definitely I, I i kept them by my side mm -hmm. these are the fear of gods, fear of gods. I, like jerry lorenzo 
yeah. was just super cool anyway. So just to be associated with something that he produced is pretty, pretty awesome. And I heard the next run of these are supposed to be crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I played with mine with those. I tried it on court. How'd you like it? It was nice. The, it has the same cushion setup as the KD-12s. Right. Very comfy. It's very bouncy. I actually probably need to go down a half size if I want to play in them. Yeah, but true. They're definitely, they're definitely comfortable. But they're kind of heavy, though. If you don't yeah. Remember, yeah. The heel, everything all the way across. But yeah. Definitely one of my favorite lifestyle shoes. And then you go just with the, the Reacts. Reacts. Super light. Mm -hmm. You know, you probably should wear socks, but I think it's cool enough not to wear <laughs> socks with them. As you can see right there. Uh, what else do I got over here? I mean, I love, for me, the Jordan 1s have turned into a lifestyle shoe. So, mm -hmm. like, I don't even count it as a basketball shoe no more. So, yeah. definitely, definitely, you know, out, outside of the 10s are my favorite. So, still got the Travis Scotts. I haven't even, I need to, Ooh. I need to get these going at some point. Took an L with that. Right. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Uh, did you get the lows? No, I, I wanted the lows more, but yeah. it's kind of hard. Uh, the resale price was kind of stiff, so I had to pass yeah. right now with that. Yeah, I got lucky with those. And then, I mean, like you got the Sakai's, the waffles that just came out. Those are super, super comfortable. And mm -hmm. It's kind of one of those things, right? Like you're trying to explain sneakers to somebody who doesn't really, yeah. like, not necessarily collect, but are into them. Like, it's like a luxury car, right? Like, okay, yeah, you got a little whatever in the garage but that Aston Martin over there probably drives a little different or that Rolls Royce feels a little different but that's what I feel like with shoes sometimes you, know? you sure. gotta, gotta keep yourself every once in a while yeah and it has to speak with your character for sure yeah. for sure I'm not a loud like colors guy so I'm more yeah. of a I mean texture and fabric and things like that so uh -huh. you know the, the Travis Scott's kind of suit me a little bit more so aside from the LeBrons and the um, Jordan 10, which other runner-ups that you use for performance-wise? Uh, right now or just like all-time? All-time. Yeah. All-time. All and all-time, probably my favorite shoe was the Zoom BBs. Mm. What was that? Yeah. That had to be 2008, something like yeah. that. 2008, 2009, mm. like Steve Nash and Jason Kidd. Yeah. Those I remember those. BBs, bro. Yeah. The awesome. Yeah, those are, <laughs> those are awesome. Um, I like the whole penny line. Uh, I wore the pennies. Um, I think in the Penny. Shout, yeah. shout out to Penny. Yeah. Shout out to Penny, little Penny. Just awesome shoes all the way through. Um, like playing in all those. Mm -hmm. And then even in the World Cup in Spain, you know, the whole Scola Argentina yeah. game. I was wearing the uh, Team Jordan. And, ah, Team Jordan. You know, when I was a kid, those are like, the first ones that weren't Jordan, you know what I mean, that were on the court. So Eddie Jones was wearing them, and guys like that. Yeah, those so the new ones came out. Uh, I got those right before we went to Spain for the World Cup. So those are just some right off the top of my head that have good memories tied to them, but also mm -hmm. were really good shoes uh, on the court. Uh, really good. Since we're on the topic of Skoda, were you aware? Give me that play by play. Were you aware that he was there? Did you know that Skoda have oh. to? Mm. <laughs> I definitely knew he was there. Um, yeah. Definitely knew he was there, but it was a perfect situation. Um, like, hard, sorry to like try to break down basketball, but I'm a two foot jumper and mm -hmm. I'm right handed. So, naturally, if I'm left hand, it's on the left side of the court where I caught the ball. Yeah. So, naturally, I can dunk at the middle of the rim with my right hand. And it was perfect. Jason passed at the perfect time. I caught it at the perfect space, and Scola just happened to be in the way. And, uh, yeah, I thank you for that memory, Luis, because it's, yeah. it's, it's carried me a long way. Even <laughs> all the Filipinos, thank you for that. Even me, I was watching the TV. I was, I, I thought you were just going to lay it up, finger roll yeah. it, but boom. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, man. it was an awesome feeling. And honestly, the, the one, the dunk I had in the second half, for me, was probably the best dunk of my career. I, I don't jump off. It was off one foot, and I'm not yeah. a one-foot jumper. And I dunked it with my left hand, and I'm not left-handed. So, and it should have been an and one. I still don't know how I wasn't shooting free throws. Uh, yeah, that that whole series, that whole time in in Spain for the World Cup was special, and you know, was happy to bring the country on the journey with us. So, would you consider that the 
like in basketball memory, like top three, which one? I mean, I've been I've been blessed through the game, and mm-hmm. probably number one, man. The Korea just qualifying for the World Cup, playing in Mall of Asia and beating Korea to to qualify for the World Cup was yeah. like to this day I get chills. Like it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Uh, seeing my family at the time, you know what I mean. With my kids there, looking around, seeing grown men crying and really understanding how much the country wanted this and to be part of the team that got to give it to the country was was unbelievable. I was, I was there. I was there. I watched live. There, yeah. I was, man, yeah, man. so awesome. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. honestly, I think the dunk on Scola might be like <laughs> top five, not even top three. That's crazy. Um, you know, playing in the Final Four um, at George Mason in college. Yeah. I won. I was lucky enough to win a state championship in high school uh, with my brother as my teammate, which is, you know, how many people can say, you know. My brother was with them winning a, any type of championship, whether it's, yeah. you know, grassroots or all the way up in high school. So, yeah, really been blessed through this game. But, you know, those those special moments playing in Mala Asia, beating Korea was awesome. Awesome. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. And back to the sneakers. Which sneaker, like, cool. for every day, like, what pair would you just gravitate and grab, just not thinking about it? Yeah, I rotate probably from the, the 270s. Mm-hmm. I like the Air Max 270s just to, you know, kind of be in. Uh, got a couple pairs of those. And then, like, uh, Air Max, the 90s, Air Max 90s, yeah. 95s. Just kind of rotate between those three, really. Just pick up and go uh, for everyday use. Do you have the 2090s already, the, the new ones? No, no. I, I, I didn't get to pick those up before everything kind of shut okay. down. So. Yeah. Heard okay, they were really mad comfortable. comfortable. That's what I heard. I mean, they look like it. They definitely mm-hmm. look the part. So, yeah. uh, if there's anything in that that Air Max series, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's worth the money. Yeah. Acid Dad, like seeing Cash belated happy birthday to Cash. Thanks, thanks, <laughs> thanks. Appreciate it. So seeing Cash right now, enjoying. He likes playing basketball, right? So, yeah. are yeah, you a sure. stage? Are you stage dad? I don't think I got all the way there yet. I haven't, I, you know what I mean? I think I'm gradually getting there. Um, you know, it's kind of cool because Cash and uh, my middle son, Orion, actually are able to play on the same team now. So it's almost like looking at myself and my brother, Jordan, on the court, um, you know, in, in rewind. But I, I try to control myself, um, you know, just enjoy the game as a spectator as much as I can, which is hard. But I, I definitely, you know, during timeouts, might call them over real quick before <laughs> before they go over to get some pointers. But they're they're great, man. They work hard and and they love the game. And they love watching. They they watch everything from NBA to old highlights to college basketball to yeah. UAB to NCAA everything. They love it. So you're not the dad who cusses on the other team. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm, I haven't got to that point. No, yeah. <laughs> Self-control, there's still tough food. Yeah, it's entertaining to see. Actually, I think I'm more entertained from the dads that do. So I, I just let them have that role. And enjoy it. Yeah. But what, like, for, what would you advise, like, for your kid? What advice would you tell those younger kids? Like, yeah, uh, I say young I kids. for younger kids um, who are trying to come up in the game now, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's a different time. Social media has changed so much stuff um, mm-hmm. for good and bad. You know what I mean? You have so much opportunity just to look on your phone and, and learn the game, new drills and things like that. But um, at the same time, I feel like get to know yourself as a player, uh, what you do well. Don't try to be somebody else. You know, it's one thing to watch and pick things, but not to completely channel yourself into being somebody that's not you. And I think a lot of that comes from being around and just playing more games, you know. Mm-hmm. Just wanting to do drills and be able to do a hundred, you know, between the legs, behind the back, step back jumpers. But, you know, you're only probably going to shoot that once in every three games. And stuff like that. But, yeah, find somebody to hold, your, how you, hold you accountable also. You know, if you don't have siblings, if you have, you know, your best friend down the street, and you guys can get work in, hold each other accountable. And just try to continue to push each other to, to be the best that you can be. Okay. And in terms of technical-wise, what 
Yeah. How would you rank uh, dribbling, shooting the drills? Huh? dribbling, yeah. shooting drills, like laterals, your footworks. What? I how mean, would I you rank? They all, they all um, hold weight, a lot of weight. At the mm-hmm. end of the day, I think right now the way the game's going, I think shooting is essential. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? If you can't pull the ball in the basket, you know, I I think a lot of people think since I don't shoot a lot, I don't like shoot I don't put the work in but you know what I mean I I work on my shot as much as I can I'm sure that's like any player in the PBA Mm -hmm. but I I think that's probably priority right now Uh, naturally ball handling as I said before I think is huge Um, you'll always be an asset on the team yeah and you can get to your spots right yeah for sure create space create for others Um, it's hard defense is a hard thing to really work on by yourself you know, you know, it's hard to, to push yourself as far as you can go if it's not somebody else pushing you in terms of like laterals or cone drills and things like that. I think a lot of that's mentality, you know, watching film, like watching when you're watching highlights, instead of just fooling and eyeing, watch and think, how could I stop that? What would I have done as a defender? Challenge yourself mentally um, to put you in the mindset to be a defender. Yeah, that's true. That's one of the most, for me, that's one of the most underrated thing that you're doing in the court, playing defense. And yeah. you're usually guarding the best player on the court, right? Are, yeah. are you requesting that or you ask I mean, the coach? I early, earlier in my career, it was something I requested. You know, mm-hmm. you know, if a guy scores a couple in a row, or, you know, you kind of need to speak up and say, I got him. Mm-hmm. Let me see if I can stop him for a little bit. And, you know, gradually as I got better defensively, wow. you know, I think it's kind of something that just kind of happens. And it's tra- it's actually transitioning a little bit out now, to be honest. If you watch a lot of our games last year with Rain or Shine, mm-hmm. we have guys like J.B. Mokon who's trying to really come into that role of, yeah. of a guy who, who accepts challenges on the defensive end. And it makes my job easier, you know what I mean? I don't have to do as much running around. Pass the torch. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But it's definitely a challenge I'm always up to. You know, yeah. that's just always been my mindset. Uh, you know, I might not give out, go and, and drop twenty, but I'm gonna make sure nobody scores twenty on me. So that's kind of my mindset. Yeah, you can help out in other aspects of the game, not just scoring. Right? For sure. For sure. Yeah. And in your career, yeah, give me one top of mind, the funniest moment. That ever happened. Yeah, top of mind, just one. <laughs> Funny moment. Like it, it for sure has to be a revolved around Raymond Almazan because Raymond is probably one of the funniest, just like funniest people on the basketball court, just in yeah. terms of mistakes. I remember actually the funniest, he went up for a dunk. I can't remember who we were playing. Mm-hmm. And it, it was like, wide open he wasn't even dunking on anybody and it's the ball slipped out of his hand or no it wasn't even a dunk it was a pass out of the post he had the ball on the post up okay and he was three it might have been like jeff chan on the team at the time so he tried to throw a one-handed like skip pass and mark i no joke the ball went into like the sixth row out of bounds like nowhere near all raymond could do is like give the fake like my hands are slippery (laughs) kind of like it was but the way it happened if you guys if you look up pba bloopers in the last probably five years raymond is probably on probably at least 10 to 15 plays so you'll get a better idea of raymond if you look yeah. that up. <laughs> so, like speaking of your career right, right now you're 35 you're yeah. one of the veterans what still motivates you and uh probably just the young kids coming in the league now you know, they, the young kids coming in now probably saw me play at my prime and, and, you know, just being able to share those experiences with them. Like I said, I mentioned JV. Um, I, I'll just speak for our team, you know, JV and Reina Mbata and, you know, Ed Dagiwa just left our squad, but those are guys who are I was constantly in their ear and try to give them words of motivation, and mm-hmm. really pass the advice ahead to them on, it's how to carry yourself as a pro, but also to know that they're doing things right, man. These kids work hard. They work really hard. And, you know, it's easy to get content in the PBA um, after X amount of years. But yeah. as long as you keep pushing yourself, you know, sky's the limit. So I, 
I think the young kids coming in and also my kids, you know what I mean? Just to prove that dad can still do it a little bit. And, you know, my hard work is, is going somewhere. But any regrets along the way? Regrets? Yeah. Um, man, probably just shoot more, but. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can still do it. <laughs> but other than that, you know, like playing for Rain and Shine my whole career. Um, and I think everybody understanding how uh, just wild it is to even have two championships, you know, um, yeah. with Rain or Shine. You, you look at the powerhouse teams. When I came in the league, it was San Miguel transitioning into like talk and text run. And then you had B Meg and Crew Foods going on their run where they dominated the league. And now San Miguel and Enebra are like taking turns winning championships. But, you know, peppered in there is two Rain or Shine championships, which I'm very proud of. Um, Really, really awesome company to play for and you know Raymond you boss Raymond has really took care of us as as a team and put us in positions to win games even if you know we're never the, the favorites to win them yeah and I think you have one of the most special career or considered you played with just one team yeah, yeah I definitely hold hold that with high regard you know um, something I take very ser seriously uh, loyalty you know what I mean um, mm -hmm. Is something that's come to mind. I've had opportunities when contract negotiations come to time, but you know, I've, it's never been a doubt to me where I wanted to play or where I wanted to be. You know, mm -hmm. you know it's, it's been a blessing for sure. Yeah. All right. Then here are some questions given thrown to me by my viewers. I, okay. I posted the stories that what questions they want to ask you. Cool, cool, cool. So, what kind of mind do you have a uh, ritual? Do, game or um i used to uh i think once i started having kids stuff changed you know what i mean your your whole routine is a little bit different and uh, but outside of you know pba is a little different right we play two games in a day so it can throw off a routine if you play second game and you know what i mean you can't get in and get shots early or you can't really break a sweat you kind of just thrown out there and you play yeah. But, you know, for me, ideally, I love playing the first game to where I can, you know, sleep in a little bit. I don't eat heavy on game days, so I might, you know, if it's first game, I'll have a light brunch, maybe, you know, some fruit before the game and then go out. If I play second game, I'll sleep in a little bit, have a heavier lunch, and then do the same. But, uh, yeah, just try to stay as light as possible. Um, mm -hmm. Nowadays, I got to stretch before the games, not like yeah. I, I used to. So, getting good stretching. I feel you, man. Just going out, right? Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> Where before, when you're a kid, you can just go, man, yeah. man. Right? Cool. And play like, again. Yeah. And even Our you, team. you're playing pro. There, there's people stretching for you, but like me, they were just playing around. And yeah. Games. <laughs> ah, wait, I mean, the stretch. You gotta get your good five minute, five minute stretch in. Tarragon, thank God for Tarragon yeah. right now. It helps. Yeah. Knowledge, man, that's huge. Massage guns, PH, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next question, favorite move? Like your go-to move? Man, um... It's weird. I'm, I'm right-handed, but I love going left. So anytime coming off like an in-out, mm -hmm. like in-out dribble to a left or right crossover, um, you know, my, my game is a lot of mid-range. As much as I get known, especially early on for dunks and things like that, uh, I love getting to a spot and elevating and using my height that way. So an in-out left and then left or right crossover is, is probably my go-to. Okay. Then next question. Does Coach Shang is softer to you or lighter to you in terms of? <laughs> no, no. Uh, it him. wouldn't be Coach Shang if it was any other way. Uh, he, he, he doesn't discriminate against, you know, who's on his team, what your stature is, or, you know what I mean, if you're a Gilas member or if you're a rookie. He, he kind of is even across the board, and if you need to get yelled at, he's going to yell at you. You know what I mean, it's, it's part of who he is and how he motivates. So it's all it's all part of the job. Yeah, classic coaching. <laughs> yeah, classics. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you currently binging right now? Netflix? Or are you into? Yeah, yeah. Finally, we, me and my wife Lay, we ran through Money Heist. I think season four, we've been waiting for it, and we finished it. I think in a night and a half. Like, <laughs> didn't stand a chance. 
just watched Parasite finally yesterday. So we, we got to find something. I, everybody's telling me to get back on Ozark. So I started it a couple of years ago. And yeah. I, it was a little bit too slow for me. So I think I got to I got to revisit it and start from the top. No crash. Any suggestions? Any suggestions? Crash landing. Crash landing. <laughs> You're like, nah, I haven't started it. I keep on. I, I watch the trailer and I look over. I'm like, mm, I don't know if I'm ready for this one. Don't worry. <laughs> Was Lee watching? Is Lee watching that? No, 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 not yet. Not yet. <laughs> All right. No, right now I'm currently watching. I just yeah, I just finished Money Heist season yeah. four. I did for yeah. two nights. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's too easy. That shows. Yeah. That shows so good. Yeah. All right. Finally, man, just final advice to all basketball fans. The how, uh, to how fans? Will, yeah. Um, basketball man. lovers. Yeah. Lovers, um, haters, all the same. And um, first off, just appreciate you personally, um, you know, for helping me in my career and the, the support and love. And like I said, even the hate, you know, it comes from a part, uh, a place of passion. A lot of times hate, that's where it's driven from. And mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, you know, whether it's, you know, Cave go dunk that every time, or why don't you do this? The whole Gilas game and PBA game debate, which is funny to me, but it, it's driven from a place of passion and I appreciate it. Uh, and, just with all the stuff that's going on now, you know, the absence of sports, I hope everybody's, you know, managing their time properly, um, maximizing time with family, uh, which mm -hmm. has been awesome for me. Uh, you know, a lot of people yeah, think, yeah. for me personally, this isn't really like necessarily downtime or free time. It's turned into more family time, which has yeah. been, you know, uh, a blessing. But for the fans, we're excited to get back on the court. I I'm sure you're happy and excited to, to hopefully see us here in the next couple months and hopefully we can put on a great show and, and everybody can come out and support. Yeah. Go support PBA and of course, Gabe, all right? Yes, yes, come check us out. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you again that's for good. the time, man. No problem, no problem. Let's get that truffle popcorn again. <laughs> I know, right? We got to come back to it. <laughs> Life change. <laughs> yeah, life changing. <laughs> I remember you saying that life changing. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I mean, I remember that was the, the first one of the first truffle popcorn I ever tasted. Yeah, introduced in the bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, where was that? I'm trying to remember where it was. Uh, Gramercy. 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 That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> We're old, man. We, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. Again, thank you. And say hi no to the family. We'll do, we'll do. Thanks. Take care. Stay safe, man. Yeah. All right. That's it. Thank you again. Peace.